Welcome to Apologetic Hour on Chariot TV. Tonight, you're saying your home can be you and you a share more and come up and a book Bible move and come up any Quran move and come up and a yabba book. Now, you will fear Adam, uh, you know, Dominic Amponsa, a Christian apologist and uh, a minister of the gospel. Obey Akaba. Yeah, me neither. Why so? Oh, I hope I don't see it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Dominic Amposa is in the house, and uh, my name is Shadrach Kapon. I'm your host on this show. T tonight we are discussing about um, uh, Christian Christianity explained to uh, Muslims how uh, Muslim uh, can be taught about the things of christianity and brother dominic amponsa uh, is here to help us uh go into it and remember this is part two if you have not watched part one please go back to our last week video on apologetica and then you can watch that video there today we are taking our time and dealing with some of the things that were raised last week that we would like to go back into them. Brother Dominic, uh, you remember last week you talked about some few things. If you can help us recap some of the things that uh, we, we talked about, about uh, how uh, Muslims understand Christianity and uh, why, I mean, in some of the things that you said, no, why okay. um, the misunderstanding of Christianity by the Muslim community and then also what Christianity really is, unlike the, the ones that uh, are being portrayed to Okay, today. yeah, I mean, uh, last week, I kind of said, I'm mm. um, uh, and I'm why you're confused mm -hmm. about Christianity. Okay. Even if Cremoni, who said Islam is some, 
and as a cremosum and yet a sum papa and tea of a sober Christonia to be confused where, sh uh, where should uh, he or she go because there are so many expressions of Christianity in the young war and there we are see a moment. A ma and your may cost so or Christosum and I'm a cremofo I confuse. And tell you, crown po a macro for me who said Christianity is not true. Mm. And now, in our <coughs> previous discussion, no, mm hmm, Mitchell must say, and you may see what Christo Sumono, yes, Christo, and in nature, nature before no, a car to horses, and a bissy, mm, a war, a yam brain. Therefore, we a cremonia, men no emma, who yes, so worried. Na ma, and also emma, who say, and as a wound, you may say, all Christians are false. No. Mm. Jesus Christ, a count Matthew chapter 24, verse number 24, said, Where we embrace there will be false Christ and false uh, prophets. A true Christo, ni a true deep be brave. Now, we are in century, we are in the dad that do not And the new man is see, I will bring Christo soon. No, I am new man is I am a Bible coming share. I use Christo, ni next year for no share to one of them. I be. And to a ceremonia. Massa and your ma one man churches worship TV sua a sofu ababa and a anointing all your bread for um your financial breakthrough and a new ma ahua man for ekka in the name of Christianity no. We are cremonia worship this program. What we are uh, what the uh, what we are saying here and say don't be confused. We mm. know you are confused, but all these happenings are going on in order for the Bible prophecy to be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So contrary to say we bring our dream there, eh, those in your man no Emma, Emma Christos, and yes, some papa no. It's eh, just say Bible, I Christos for every man no. Eh, eh, how many every one yango pong? Because I know many na yes to Christo, I can't to her. Next year from Moody, next year so I can't to her. We share Second Peter chapter two, verse one to three. But Christo ni Osman for Peter, I can't to her. So I know many na, but they'll be false teachers, they'll be false prophets. Who will exploit people with counterfeit ways, and a lot of people will follow them. Inti, any one who says no, be who nimpa, we will a PhD, masters, first degrees. Ah, we will only be there to make sure your Bible, so we follow false teachers and false prophets. How many people today like objective and careful study of the Bible? As maybe we are doing here. People mm. don't like this. People like places where they'll be giving prophecies and predictions. Yeah. And, uh, they'll be giving assurance, lot of numbers, and so many kind of things. And to Mr. S. We know some of these things have confused you. So the whole of Christianity is not true. Or Christianity is false because of what these people are doing. But our purpose in this show is to, uh, is to encourage you that there is still hope. Yeah. If you are considering Christianity as an option, there is still hope in Christianity, and we want you to study with us. And together, we will help you know Christianity as is recorded to us in the Bible. Okay. And um, quickly, let, let me come back to some of the things you have raised. That Christianity that is being you know, practiced in our time... Mm -hmm. Is not the kind of Christianity that we know from the scriptures. Yes. And it may say, we taking me back to the explanation of what that Christianity is. Last week, Obobo Ibiso. Okay. And last week, I'm say, I'm going Bible, we didn't want to answer. No, so Christ was someone. A Jina, yes, Christ was. And in the Sunya, for one last month, for in church, so. So, biblical Christianity or New Testament Christianity is grounded upon. The teachings of Jesus Christ and his inspired apostles. Mm -hmm. Into your kind be a war, Matthew chapter 28, mm -hmm. verse number uh, 18. I think uh, Jesus said, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on, on earth. Mm -hmm. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. So Christianity, all through Christianity, is grounded on the teachings of Jesus Christ. Teaching them to observe all things I, Jesus, have commanded you. Mm. And the Asian Christian community followed the teachings of Jesus Christ. And because they followed only the teachings of Jesus Christ, 
Christianity grew massively in the ancient world. In Acts chapter 2, verse number 47. Mm -hmm. Let me even read Acts chapter 2, verse number 42. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Mm -hmm. By the way, in the Bible, no, baby, a Christosom, a fear, say, a act chapter two. Mm -hmm. I'm saying in our last discussion, we can kind of say, Jesus Christ, and an usher, and come, say, or the asa for be back as I see so. He come to build a church in Matthew chapter 16, verse number 18. Jesus Christ said, Upon this rock, I, I will Jesus, will build my, my church. church. Mm -hmm. So it was a promise, mm -hmm. and that promise of Jesus Christ was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. Mm. Read the whole book of Acts chapter 2, or the, the whole chapter of Acts chapter 2, and you see Jesus' fulfillment, the, 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 fulfillment, the fulfillment of Jesus' promise in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 over there. Mm. So in Acts chapter 2, verse number 42, we see this. The first Christian converts, this is what they did. Acts chapter 2, verse, verse number 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Mm. So, what did every Christian community did? They continued in the Jesus' apostles' teachings. Mm. And what teaching did Jesus give to the apostles? All that he Jesus commanded them. Yeah. And because the early Christian community followed only the teachings of Jesus Christ, the church grew. In Acts chapter 2, verse 47, we read, we further read, praising God and having favor with all the people. That's the church. Mm -hmm. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So the church grew. The church of Christ grew in the early days because they stick only to the word of God. They stick to only to what Jesus commanded and what the apostle by the Spirit of God taught them. And you say, Christ was a Bible. Christ was a Bible. Yes, Christ was a Bible. Yes, Christ was a Bible. Yes, you Christ to any day soon for one last month for an church or so. So, biblical Christianity or New Testament Christianity is grounded upon the teachings of Jesus Christ and his inspired apostles. In the kind of Bible, Matthew chapter 28, mm -hmm. verse number uh, 18, I think uh, Jesus said, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on, on earth. Mm. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. So Christianity, all through Christianity, is grounded on the teachings of Jesus Christ. Teaching them to observe all things I, Jesus, have commanded you. Mm. And the ancient Christian community followed the teachings of Jesus Christ. And because they followed only the teachings of Jesus Christ, Christianity grew massively in the ancient world. In Acts chapter 2, verse number 47. Mm. Let me even read Acts chapter 2, verse number 42. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. Mm -hmm. By the way, in the Bible, no, baby, a Christos, a fear, say, a Acts chapter 2. Mm -hmm. I'm saying in our last discussion, no, you can say, Jesus Christ, and an usher, and come, say, or the asa for be back as I see so. Mm -hmm. He come to build a church. In Matthew chapter 16, verse number 18, Jesus Christ said, Upon this rock, I, I Jesus, will build my, my church. church. Mm. So it was a promise. Mm -hmm. And that promise of Jesus Christ was fulfilled in Acts chapter 2. Mm. Read the whole book of Acts chapter 2, or the, the whole chapter of Acts chapter 2, and you see Jesus' fulfillment, the, 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 fulfillment, the fulfillment of Jesus' promise in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18 over there. Mm. So in Acts chapter 2, verse number 42, we see this. The first Christian converts, this is what they did. Acts chapter 2, verse, verse number 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Mm. So what did the Christian community did? They continued in the Jesus' apostles' teachings. Mm. And what teaching did Jesus give to the apostles? All that he, Jesus, commanded them. Yeah. And because the early Christian community followed only the teachings of Jesus Christ, the church grew. In Acts chapter 2, verse 47, we read, we further read, praising God 
and having favor with all the people. That's the church. Mm -hmm. And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. So the church grew. The church of Christ grew in the early days because they stick only to the word of God. They stick to only to what Jesus commanded and what the apostle by the Spirit of God taught them. And you will say, Christosuma, our Bible, no, Christosuma, you know, yes, Christosuma, you know, Christosuma, for no church, right? So, and then, in the ABR air cost of Christosuma, and Gina, near yes, Christosuma, you know, for church, right? So, that thing is not part of Christianity. That thing is not part of Christianity. And I assure you, as some back home say, a convent, so, and a Christopher Crumpon, or say a bomb pie, so I also say, in our last episode, no, you who said that kind of prayer, prayer, na prayer, you know, you it is nowhere founded in the Bible. You who know, be our Bible, we say Christ of all, we shall see, no more people who came to say, "Nema, so called Christians be aye no." Gospel according to Matthew chapter number six, verse number five to eight. Jesus Christ condemned that kind of prayer. Empire boy, yeah, boy, who can park, who can do not connect, who can do not so demo, who can come and I, I can come on. I just say, yeah, boy, yeah, bro, on some, na, you try on some, that dear, do all those kind of things are hypocritical prayers. Jesus condemned that in Matthew chapter six, verse number five to eight. And so many ceremony, I will share this show. If you want to understand Christianity, like we, we said in our uh, for, uh, previous show, mm -hmm. read the New Testament. Read the New Testament. So let don't let this so-called prayers by some Christian group uh, discourage you from reading the New Testament. So this is not how Christians pray. Praying noisily, shouting, repetition of words. Jesus condemned that kind of that attitude in prayer. So this is what we said about. Uh, Christianity uh, in our last discussion. Okay, so um, <clears throat> having said that, mm -hmm. let me come to some of the things that are practiced in Christianity that we, the Muslims, we, the Muslims, okay, have problems with. Okay. Because some of the Muslims that I have, um, you know, been in contact with, Okay. Uh, think that some of the things that they see uh, are not in consonant with some of the things they read from the scriptures. Okay. And so one of them has to do with, I mean, I have a number of them. So once I mentioned that you try to work on it, then okay. come to the next one. Uh, they, they said women as pastors. Okay. They read from the scriptures that women are to be silent but they come into today's christianity and they see some women being pastors and all that so um they they have seen what we are discussing on one share and then my discuss on charity tv so and on busa said in that case you know uh then uh yeah uh, yeah uh, uh, what do we have to say about women um uh being pastors in the Christian church. Okay, Medase, for this genuine concern. And I have personally also made this question. Oh, okay. I didn't know if it was Christosum or no, and my asofo, and my tete asore in Christianity. But I mean, yeah, Cremonia worship. What's your Bible? More Christosum, you who are Bible, mono. And my whole kind of barbay asore penny, and as a barbay sofo. Say, a woman is the founder of a church. Or buyer or yes of for or preach, and he is he he or she uh, he uh, she calls herself Reverend Minister or any uh, uh, whatsoever. Mm. The Christianity that we see in the Bible does not permit women to be ministers in the church. That is not to say that if you were a Christian and you were a woman, you have no, no role to play in the church. Women have their role to play in the church. So let's go straight to the Bible. Mm -hmm. First Timothy, the book of First Timothy, chapter number two, verse number eleven. First Timothy chapter two. First Timothy. Okay. First Timothy two eleven. Two eleven. 
Mm -hmm. It says that mm -hmm. <clears throat> let a woman learn quietly mm -hmm. with all submissiveness. Mm -hmm. I do not permit a woman to teach or to exercise authority over a man. Pause. Let a woman, let a woman learn in silence. Mm. With all submission, verse 12, I do not permit a woman to teach or to have authority over a man, but to be in silence. This crystal clear. Mm. Bible in the church say, Ma or ba, mo ba in your co in suya, ewa mo ba sing in amu, no ba digna mano quine se, on treachery, and na se, only obema su sana kine, only obema su to me. That's so clear. That is so clear. Some people will say, Oh, I had a poor no watch an argument. Paul is here expressing his or um, exercising his judgment. As we said in one of our discussion, Paul, all that he wrote, all that he said were from God. Galatians chapter 1, verse number 11 and 12. Paul Ekan said, And some no Paul Ekan are revelation from the Lord Jesus Christ, mm. including what he just said here. Yeah. So you can't just hide. On the shadow that oh here Paul was exercising his own judgment and this is this is not a commandment from Jesus Christ. The Bible is so clear. No system of hermeneutics can be used to uh, explain away the import of this passage. Mm. Bible Bible in first Paul Mm. Also, bad the amount of coins on church, and that's the only members to two. Yeah. Uh, and what was the reason? Mm. Why should why why is it that a woman cannot be a leader in the church or have authority over a man? But you have mommy. Verse 13. Mm -hmm. For Adam was first formed, mm -hmm. then Eve. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. So what was did, uh, what was Paul's reason for a woman not being able to be a leader in the church or be a preacher or be a pastor in the church? Because Adam was formed first. Mm. Then Eve. So nature even tells us that women have to submit. As in marriages. Mm. I've, the, the, I, I've never seen any marriage where the woman is the head of the the, of, the, of, the, of, of, of the family. Of, of the family. In every marriage, the man is the head of the family. And we all respect that. Why is that when it comes to the church? We don't, we don't want to obey this simple command of, of our Lord. The second reason, verse 14. Verse 14. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman was deceived and became a transgressor. The second reason why a woman cannot be a leader or pastor of a church is that for Adam was not deceived, but rather the woman, Eve, mm. she was the one that was deceived. Yeah. If you ask me why, these are the reasons that the Bible gave. A woman cannot be a pastor or a leader of the church. Why? Because Adam was formed first before Eve, and Adam was not deceived, but Eve. That is why a woman cannot serve as a pastor. You see, I've read so many commentaries on this. Mm. Exegesis, in, uh, hermeneutics, a lot of people, scholars are saying that, you see, this statement of Paul was in response to some social cultural circumstances that were in Ephesus. Uh, that were in Ephesus. Mm. That is why Paul said this. So this is not a universal command. It was a culturally, culturally conditioned command. And you may be an ACC or FSU as a phenomenon in a podcast as a man. And I say, a man may be an error one, a woman from my she into a podcast and a man you come on. Now, yes, I did uncle Paul Betcher said, Marble to my church. My dear viewer, no sound exegesis of first Timothy will tell you that, sir, I found a poor kind of a cultural issue. Now uh, his, uh, historical cultural context be in same year this is where Ephesus come on to the poor cast as well. Raising a poor mind, I express or burning to me church. And Paul didn't give us any historical reason or any cultural reason. 
that because women are not respected in Ephesus, that is why women are not to serve as leaders. Paul's reason was something that could be traced to the origin of humanity. Mm, that Adam was first formed. So the first reason is that Adam was created first. first. And so if Adam was not created first, then that reason would be invalid. Sure. But in this case, Adam was created, created first. first. That is why, and that's that's why is, women should keep silent. And they should submit to a man. Hey, this, this is a serious thing. This is very serious. So, because there are a lot of churches who have ordained ministers who are females, who are women. And so all these, and so Muslims will see these churches and they will have a problem with it. With Christianity. But you read the New Testament. But when you come into the uh, New Testament, you don't see this. You don't see this. So Muslim having that, uh, uh, I mean, that opinion about Christianity is wrong. Very wrong. Because the Christianity that we know does not permit a woman to be a leader. Be a leader. That is not to say that the woman is useless in the church. No. You read the book of First Peter. A woman can teach other women. Mm -hmm. A woman can also preach, tell others about Christ, mm -hmm. the unbelievers, yeah. about Christ. But in the church setting, when the church comes together to worship, the woman is not permitted to be the leader of the worship. Mm. To be the one that will be teaching, to be the mm -hmm. one that, that will be leading, leading singing, songs, leading in singing, in bringing everything. All leadership role in the church of God or the church of Christ is entrusted into unto men. And this is something that we are to submit. This is the Lord's command. Just as in the family, and member the leaders the, of the family, no, we need to respect that. It's a way, we are Muslim. That's a, well, I mean, what you're saying is, we'll be a Muslim. No, who church be a, a ma, a ma, kwai mo muti miya sa ane mana. Enye church na, enye Christianity you need more sure. Bible mo no. That church no, is transgressing this teaching of the Bible, and mm. therefore cannot be a true New Testament church. True New Testament, that, that, that church cannot be a true New Testament church. I see. And so Muslims should see say, these churches have, have transgressed the this word of God. Of, this teaching of the Bible. So you they, see, are, they are not true Christians. You see, we have something called gender, this, this kind of movement in our world today known as uh, uh, feminist, uh, in theology, feminist theology. Yeah. And this gender activists and feminist people who are trying to contest that whatever a man can do, a woman can also do. And uh, women and uh, men are all equal in the sight of God. Even when Jesus died uh, and uh, was raised, it was women who first uh, preached the gospel or uh, reported to that disciple that Jesus had been raised from the dead. So, women, mm. because of all these things, women too can serve as leaders. All this argument are bogus. Mm. All these things happened. Paul could have cited all these things and said, "Oh, because of uh, because women were the first to see the, the risen Christ, women can also serve as leaders. Because uh, uh, women too can also have ability to also preach. They can also serve as leaders in the church." But Paul said that you see, our reason for women not serving as leaders is that Adam was formed first, and Adam wasn't the one who was. Deceive, but if that is why women are to submit, mm. and even the very day that Adam and Eve transgressed the law of mm. God in the garden, yeah, one of the punishment God gave to the woman was that because of what you have done, mm -hmm. your husband will be your head, will be, will be your head, or uh, 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 the, your, the man will rule over you. Mm. So, part of what Paul said is in fulfillment of in fulfillment of what God said to the woman. Mm -hmm. So a woman has to submit. No matter how intelligent, how eloquent, how, uh, uh, how eloquent you are. Mm. The Bible doesn't permit you to be a leader of the church. Mm. Be a preacher. Be an, uh, be an evangelist. Having your own church. I preaching. See. You can, there are so many roles that you can serve in the church. You can teach children in the church. You can teach your fellow women. But in the church worship, in the context of worship, you can't serve as a preacher or a teacher in the church. In first, in first. So this is all clear. Me, brother Shadak, I don't even want to go to 1 Corinthians 14. Because 1 Corinthians 14 seemed to be a particular issue. It was particularly about some uh, arrogant women 
whose uh, no, but, but whose, uh, it, husbands but, were but church look, leaders. I, and I want of that, you, you want to brag about that. I want you to look at the verse uh -huh. thirty uh, eight uh -huh. of that that passage. The verse thirty eight says that if anyone does not recognize this, uh -huh. he is not recognized by God. Sure. So from that, we are. It, it is. Uh, it is clear that Christianity didn't start with us, and and that's the point I wanted to make. Yeah, he said, if anyone thinks himself to be an, a prophet or spiritual, mm. let him acknowledge that the things which I write to you are the commandment of the Lord. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians chapter fourteen, verse number thirty-seven. Yes. So, so when we talk about some of these teachings, it is clear that when we talk about women leadership. The Bible frowns upon it. Sure, the Bible frowns upon it. So you see, we are told in the Bible that we Christians should transform the world. But it's so sad that many churches today are allowing the world to transform them. We are not to conform to the world. Christians are not to conform to the world. Mm. But it's so sad that the world is now transforming. Instead of us to transform the world, the world is now transforming the church. So many churches are now giving in, allowing women to be, to be pastors, all because of gender activists, feminist theology. What mm. a man can do, a woman can do it better. So all the traditional churches that were against women or the nation or women into ministry are now allowing women to serve as pastors and preachers, all because of the pressure from the so-called feminist theologians and this femin uh, gender activists. Mm. But what these people are doing is against the teaching of the Bible. What these people are doing is against the teaching of the Bible. The Bible condemns women leadership in the church. We see so many examples. All the 12 disciples or apostles of Jesus Christ were all a male. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All the early church leaders were male. Male. Even the, after the apostolic era, the the, 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 the apostles and the apostolic fathers, the church fathers, mm. they, all, they, they were all uh, men. males or men. Tertullian, uh, Justin Mattia, Ignatius, mm. uh, um, uh, Irenaeus, all Irenaeus, those yeah. great Christian scholars and theologians were men. So, so this at mindset of this uh, thinking of what a man can do, a woman can do it better, just came in. Uh, we are in the 19th and the, in, in, the, in the 20th and the 21st century. That yeah. people started advocating for this. Okay, so, so that's, that's one thing. Um, I will come to the next thing, but I would like to find out from you. What does these, you know, differences mm -hmm. in the teachings of the Christian churches around uh what are the effects of these teachings because in fair in, in john chapter um in john chapter 17 mm -hmm. jesus offered a prayer mm -hmm. and i'd like us to read it that uh, in john chapter 17 verse um 20 and 21. Yes. Verse 20 and 21 says that I do not ask for these alone, but, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they all may be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they also may be one, may sure. be in us, sure. so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Okay. So from this teaching, are we saying that uh, Jesus wanted the, uh, the, 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 the followers, his followers, Jesus wanted followers of his to be one, one. to be saying the same thing. So that those who don't believe in... We even see our unity and see that we are from God. Mm, so if churches around are allowing women to 
to lead, to be pastors. Churches around are uh, conducting their prayer session in such a way that is, against you know, the spirit against of the, 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 the spirit of the New Testament teachings. Then are we saying that these things portray the, the disunity among Christians? Sure. And that sure. causing unbelievers like Muslims to, 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 to find it difficult to disparage to... Christ and what he brought. Mm. So you see, um, you see, but I see all these things to be the trick of the enemy. Mm. Many Christian, many scholars in these churches have seen all these things. In fact, I have, they know them. They have, di have dialogue with some, even in, 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 uh, at university, one of our lecturers. I personally had an encounter with him on some of these passages. He was, he was saying, oh, these passages were cultural issues. They were culturally conditioned command. Paul mm -hmm. said, oh, because of the culture, culture background of the Christians. So these things don't bind to us anymore. You see, but as I said, there is nothing cultural about what Paul said. We know, yes, that there are culturally conditioned teachings in the Bible when it comes to veiling in First Corinthians chapter eleven. The veil that Paul talk about some there are so many things in the Bible that has to do with culture of the people, and we are not based on those of the Christians in the twenty first century. But there are also passages and commandments in the Bible that are universal, mm. and First Timothy 1, First Timothy chapter 2, verse 11 to 14 is not a cultural conditioned commandment. It's a universal commandment that is binding on all Christians at all times. Mm. And you see, many of these theologians agree that, yes, it's so clear that women shouldn't serve as leaders, but uh, they see this to be a trivial matter. Mm. And to me, I see this to be a trick of the enemy. Satan always make you make want make us to or want us to tri trivialize to realize the, the God's the, the, teachings or mm. the commandments of God. Mm. Or oh, he told Eve, you see, as God indeed told you that she didn't touch the uh, eat this tree, uh, uh, this fruit of the uh, of the vine or, mm -hmm. or of, of the of the distant. Mm -hmm. And uh, Eve also said, yes. Oh, don't worry. See, God knows that if you eat this thing, you become wise to know good and uh, evil. Mm. So Satan always make want us to trivialize all everything that God has what given to us. And there's one of one example. Mm. No serious scholar will exegete First Timothy two and conclude that it has to do with culture. It it is not a cultural issue. It is a universal command. In fact, I've read a lot of books on this, and there are many Christian theologians who agree with us uh, who, who are in, in support with the church of christ uh, position on this mm. and there are many uh, christian churches who are, who are also uh, uh, against women ordination and 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 and, and uh, ministration in the church i see but you see some of these churches are giving in because of the pressure from the feminist uh, uh, theologians yeah. and this and what the gender society, activists and what yeah. the society is now doing yeah yeah but it's so sad it's so sad that they are doing that because it's so clear. So my our dear Muslims, the Bible is so clear on this that in Christianity or in a Christian church, women cannot serve as leaders. Mm. There's not just one part. We have so many examples we can give in the New Testament to support that in the church, women are to keep quiet. They are to be submissive to the men mm. who are the leaders of the church they have other things that they can do they can tell others about jesus christ outside the church worship they can minister to children they can minister to their fellow, fellow women. women yeah all these things are their work there are so many work women can do in the church but when it comes to leadership they are not allowed to do so even in some of these churches that allow women of the nation i'm here to see a woman being archbishop of, mm -hmm. of these churches that allowed maybe it's coming up women to serve as pastors it's coming. you know initially most of the churches if i mean if if you have observed from the early days of the churches even in ghana uh -huh. most of these churches were having only men as their leaders sure. if these are recent you know uh, happenings sure. in the in the, in the you're giving into the pressure 
Yeah. I, I quickly, let me come back to uh, what we are looking at. Uh, if you are watching us, this is uh, Apologetic Hour on Chariot TV. And we are discussing Christianity explained to Muslim as our topic. And uh, Brother Dominic is helping us uh, to go into some of the things. And one other thing that I would like you to help us is another issue that is dividing Christianity. Okay. And that has to do with dancing and drumming in the church. So uh, with the time left, I, I think we can discuss this and probably move on to other stuff before our time will be up. So help me. Can uh, If a Muslim has a problem with the way Christians dance and drum all over, is the Muslim justified to say that Christianity is a false religion? Yeah, the Muslim has a point. Because mm -hmm. even common sense should tell you. Mm -hmm. Common sense, even common, our common sense tells us that if you approach a great person, mm -hmm. like a president or a king, mm -hmm. you approach, you go to the king's palace, mm -hmm. you go there with respect. Yeah. Even when you are talking to the king, mm -hmm. you make sure all things that you're going to, everything that you're going to say to the, to the king are polite words. Mm -hmm. But how come we approach the Almighty God and we think we can do whatever we like in His presence? Mm. So they are right. They are justified in having problem with, the, uh, with, 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 with those kind of things that we are seeing in our churches today. And so how do you explain this? Yeah, in the New Testament, the Bible is so clear. We are to sing. Daily Christians sang hymns. Jesus sang. In Matthew chapter 26, verse number 30, after the after the Lord's Supper, Jesus sang hymns with the disciples. And mm -hmm. the church also sang in their worship. So singing is part and parcel of Christian worship. But one thing that we don't see the early Christian doing was using instrument, instrument, uh, instrumental accompaniments. Mm -hmm. They never accompany their singing with any kind of instrument, drumming, uh, beating, drums, and this kind of Things that we are seeing in today's churches. Mm. They sang. And we can read something from the New Testament, Act, uh, Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 19. Okay. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19 um, <clears throat> reads. Uh -huh. It says, Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. Good. Verse 20. Giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are to speak to one another in psalms, hymns mm. and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Mm. So what we learn from this passage is that even in singing, we teach one another. Mm. We teach one another we in singing. We speak to one another. We speak to one another. From the words in the songs. Yes. It is so sweet to trust in, in Jesus. Jesus. Mm. Uh, yes, uh, Jesus. This song okay. is telling us to trust only in Jesus for, for our salvation. Mm. So that's what I say. Yeah. Dachi, dachi, be this. This song is giving us uh, reaffirming or uh, giving, us, giving us a, 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 an understanding about our hope as Christians. Mm. That one day, one day, we are going to be with the Lord in heaven. Yeah. So these are the type of songs the Bible commands or legislates for Christians in worship. Mm. Not just any song, but spiritual, uh, spiritual song. songs, hymns, psalms, and so many things. These yeah. are the things kind of music that we are to use in the church. Mm. And Colossians 3, 16, Colossians 3, 16, let's read that passage as well. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, uh, says that, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, mm -hmm. in teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, mm -hmm. singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs mm -hmm. with thanksgiving in your hearts to the Lord. Amen. Amen. You see, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, mm -hmm. 
and hymns and spiritual songs, mm -hmm. singing with grace mm. in your heart to the Lord. You see? I see. So, song ministration is not just for entertainment. Mm. But today, singing in churches has become a source of entertainment. We just go to church ay -ya, ay -ya, ay -ya, and we just entertain ourselves. We, we can dance, <laughs> get, uh, get some sweats. <laughs> And then we say that church was sweet. Uh, Chrysonto. All these kind of things are in the, <laughs> happening in the churches today. And people think... <laughs> uh, it's, it, it's good because we are making a joyful shout to the Lord. Mm. But this is not what we see in the rich Christian church. They took worship to very something serious. They have approached the king of kings. Mm. The Lord of laws. And when we come up, when you approach God, we approach him with seriousness. With mm. love, with dignity. Oh, I see. So singing is something that the early church did, but we don't see some of these things that people today are doing in the life of the early church. Mm. You go to some church and we see some instruments and like it is like concert party. We have reduced the whole worship to entertainment and the kind of dancing and costume that some of this so-called Christian gospel singers were to the church, very despicable. Mm. The whole, the, the, the church, the, the worship has become worldliness. Yeah. So, Brother Shadrach, the New Testament is so clear. And so, if a Muslim is watching us, <clears throat> what are you going to use as some of the things that we have talked about to, to, to persuade this Muslim to accept Christianity. Yeah, I, 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 my, 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 my statement or my words to the Muslims is that I, they should read the Bible themselves. Mm. And the Bible says we should even test our spirit and see which one is from God. Mm -hmm. So the fact that many Christian churches are doing some of these things which are not in line with the Bible mm -hmm. does not mean every Christian church is like that. Mm. Every Christian church is not like that. Jesus said in John 18, John chapter, Gospel according to John chapter number 8, verse number 32, that you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you, set free. you free. Yeah. There are still Christian groups on this very earth who are seeking to worship God according to what we see in the New Testament. People may label them as a cake. Mm. The old people. Mm. The, the Gold Coast people. But yeah. my dear viewer, the God, the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ is unchangeable. Mm. The worship, the pattern of worship God has given us as Christians is still unchanging. Mm. We are not to add to this truth and we are not to subtract from it. Man has always loved to run away from God and to use his own standard. So, my dear Muslim, don't be confused, as I said earlier on. Just read the New Testament yourself. The book of Acts, you see how Christianity started. How the real Christian practiced their Christianity. And we in the churches of Christ are trying to be like the early church. Trying to be like the early Christians. Speaking where the Bible speaks. And be silent where the Bible is silent. Wherever you are. Are you tired of what is going on in today's Christianity? We are inviting you to come or visit any church of Christ near you to see how New Testament Christianity, New Testament system of worship or pattern of worship is restored in all these Christian churches known as churches of Christ. And I, we, 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 we believe and we hope when you visit us, you will love Christianity and submit your will to Jesus Christ and be saved. Thank you so much. Brother Dominic Camponsa is our guest today. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, he has done justice to all the things that we have raised today. The work is done. Yours is to ponder over them and make an informed decision as to becoming a Christian through this teaching and baptizing to join the Church of Christ. Uh, 
to worship our maker. Uh, this show is aimed at helping you to learn and make an informed decision about your uh, eternal life, uh, the life after this one. And so uh, thank you so much, brother, for joining us. We are grateful for your time. Thank you too for the opportunity. And uh, my name is Shadrach Opon. We hope to see you next week as we continue the discussion on other topics on this show. Uh, I'm sure we'll have time to discuss a whole lot of things about the Bible and the Quran as uh, we wish it. It's my invitation to all Muslims and even Christians or uh, people who are in the Christian churches who do not understand some of these things to link up with us on the WhatsApp line on your screen or you can send us an email uh, via our email address the uh, um, our email address is chariot tv gh chariot tv gh as one word at gmail.com chariot tv gh at gmail.com when you send us an email or you send a whatsapp message on our whatsapp line on your screen we will link up with you and continue the discussion we believe as we do that we are helping you come closer to your maker that will guarantee your eternal life with god and if you are a supposed christian and you practice some of these things in your churches why don't you call us why don't you link up let us learn more from the things that we have already shared with you god bless you and like i always say the bible says, and you shall know the truth and the truth will surely set you free on charo tv we say here is a single source of the truth why don't you always uh turn to come and learn from us just like our page subscribe to our youtube channel and whatever we will teach you will get to uh, uh know by receiving a, a notification from facebook or the youtube channel god bless you and see you next week bye bye <laughs>